Hey everyone, welcome to another video for GrowGreenAndGrew.com. Uh, today's video segment, we're going to go over uh, testing pH and what it means for your water and your plants and everything like that. Um, before we get started, what does pH mean? What is it abbreviation for? Um, we actually don't know. <laughs> There's three things that um, we think it is. Um, the most common one is potential hydrogen. Um, and two other ones are uh, potential hydronium or power of hydronium. Uh, either way, they all mean the same thing. They're basically testing the um, acidity or the alkalinity of the soil or the water or whatever you're testing. Um, so with that said, 0 to 7 would be acidic, 7 would be neutral, and then 7 to 14 would be uh, alkaline or um, it'd be basic. Um, so it's 0 to 14 is the whole scale itself. Um, now there's different companies that make uh, pH up and down and pH kits, pH testers, um, you know, there's litmus paper, there's pH paper. Um, all of them are good ways, um, to be completely honest, um, you know, get a meter, just, it's a lot easier, you don't, you don't have to mess with, um, you know, just testing and everything like that. You just put it in and it's ready to go usually. I mean, the only downside to having a meter is you might have to recalibrate it, you know, but, um, it, that's usually like once a month anyway and you know just test it periodically to make sure it's on point you know if it is then there's no reason to recalibrate it but anyway um we're gonna go ahead and show you how to test it with the general hydroponic solution which is this right here um you put three drops into a vial like this but first you put it you put your water in so you go ahead and fill it halfway is what they say about halfway Kind of like that, and then just throw three drops of water in it, and then see what color it turns. Um, they give you a uh, a kit, like a like a little guide to show you, um, you know what colors mean what. Um, they actually give you a separate one, but uh, the bottle has it as well. So if it's like really blue, to eight point five, then it goes all the way down to basically red. Um, and yeah, when you go to do it, just shake, give it a little shake. You can see it's green. So that would lead us like around the seven range, which is neutral, but we want it to be about 6.5 for soil. And then for hydro growers, you want 5.8. So why do you want the pH to be like that? Well, pH basically lets um, nutrients in and out. I mean, if you have an imbalance of pH, you can have a pH, uh, you can have a nutrient lockout. Um, so like, it's more evident with micronutrients when you're using things that aren't needed in in uh, big amounts um, because those get locked out and then it just you just start a big battle you know and it <laughs> it can cause a lot of problems so I mean like you want to stay relatively you know close in the same range you don't want to go six one day seven one day five the other day eight the next day you know you want to have it like 6.5, 6.3, 6.5, you know, you want to keep it within the same area because if not, then you're going to fluctuate, you're going to lock things out, and then once one thing gets locked out, another thing can get locked out, and then you think you have a deficiency, but you really don't, you have a lockout. So basically what a lockout is, is the nutrients there, it could be there in the soil, it could be readily available in the soil, you could be feeding, you know, like a, a nitrogen lockout. You could be feeding your plants a ton of nitrogen, but your plants are not absorbing it because the pH is off. And yeah, anyway, there's a, a guide that will show you um, on my website um, that will show you the different um, levels of pH and what nutrients get locked out at what levels. So that is a really good chart to look over. Make sure you know what your, you know, your pH is and everything like that. So anyway, um, we're going to wrap up this video with one last test. We're going to show you how to use the, uh, the pH meter itself. Um, there's different companies that make this. This one's by Milwaukee. Um, it's kind of, I guess, not an off-brand, but it's a cheaper version of um, the Blue Lab one. I have the Blue Lab um, 
TDS and PPM meter. It works great. But I mean, I've honestly, I've known a lot of people to use this one. It's a lot cheaper than the, the Blue Lab one. Not saying that Blue Lab is a bad company. They're, they're a great company. They have, you know, a lot of different meters out there. You know, they have the truncheon and all kinds of stuff. They got their stuff going on. But um, not saying that other meters don't work because they're good. So, you know, Milwaukee, just as good. Um, so anyway, I got the sticker I just kind of left on there. But different companies will, I mean, just read over your guide because some, um, some companies tell you to actually keep the um, meter constantly soaking even when you're not using it. You want to use 7.0 um, pH water. So, which I'll show you here in a second. I actually forgot it. <laughs> I'll go uh, get that really quick. Um, basically, um, there's a testing solution. It looks just like this. There's a 4.012. Um, this is just your standard reference solution. This, you don't put it in anything. You just basically, this is to make sure that your, um, your gauges is calibrated, your pH gauge is calibrated. So what we're going to do is take the top off. Um, you can either pour this into a cup and then use that, but honestly, I don't. I just go right from the top. Um, <laughs> which the manufacturer recommends you not doing because, you know, contamination. Um, you know, after a while, this bottle is going to have a lot of contaminants that you don't want in it from, you know, going back and forth like that. So it's really good to have distilled water and then wash out between every time you do it, but I'm not too worried about it anyway. Anyway, you just go ahead and turn it on, and as you can see, it's supposed to say 7, so it says 7.1, which is 0.1 off, um, which it would need calibration, and what you do, there's like a little hole on the side, you take a screwdriver, and you go left or right with it, um, I'll show you that, but it's, it's, it's easy, you can figure it out. Not all companies do this, um, this one does, so, um, you know, just keep that in mind. But anyway, um, you just go ahead and put it right in your your mixing solution or whatever solution you're using. And you remember earlier when we did the uh, test with the strips, it was about seven, so it's sitting at about seven point two, seven point one. Um, like I said, it's not one hundred percent calibrated. It's point one off, but you know, so it's either seven point three or seven point one, you know, whatever. So um, yeah, with that said. Um, just make sure you read over your instruction manuals and everything like that. Um, this meter, um, it says to make sure and not remove it from the water like while it's still on. So make sure like when you put the meter in, it's off before you put it in. Turn it on, read your level, turn it back off, and then remove it from the water. Do not remove it from the water while the meter is still on and turn it off. That's what it gets messed up and uncalibrated and everything like that. So not all companies do that. This one does. Um, you know, just read the directions before you go ahead and mess your meter up. You know. So anyway, um, I hope this video helped you guys out in understanding pH a little bit and the importance of it. Um, it's often very overlooked. People usually think, oh, I'm you know a soil grower. I don't need to do that. Now there's other things I need to talk about with pH, but I'll go over it in another video. Um, there's things like buffering agents and everything like that, and uh, pH perfect, um, some lines do pH perfect, but we'll go over that later. But anyway, I hope this video helped you guys out understanding what pH is and everything like that. So anyway, stay tuned for more. As always, take it easy, guys. Peace.